Hi, I'm wanting to speak to you a little bit about the importance of yoga in schools. So I know some of you are very aware of that we have been practicing yoga in schools actually in the UK for an awfully long time, probably over 30 years now. But what's different is today it's becoming much more in the public eye. And last week I was invited to come on to Good Morning Britain to discuss with Piers Morgan about whether yoga and mindfulness is making our kids into snowflakes. So these kind of conversations are really important for us to have. Um, I take on skeptics very, very willingly. 33% of our schools in the UK are currently taking on yoga as a cheap and extremely effective preventative and therapeutic well-being initiative. And um, just this week, Edward Timpson, who is a very impressive barrister um, and also on the APPG for Looked After Children, he published a landmark report about excluded kids. So we have tens of thousands of children every year are being off-rolled off schools because they're not performing well academically. This is an absolute outrage, as most of them seem to be fall into the SEN category, so the special needs category. So we're having kids who already have special needs and mental health issues who are being off-rolled because they're not performing well so that the school's um, median of, of the league table, they're dropping in the league table so they're off-rolling their kids. If this kind of thing is happening in schools, it needs to be exposed. So Edward Timpson did this, and Edward Timpson has also been a real proponent for yoga in schools. Many times he's mentioned that yoga would be an absolutely excellent way of preventing this kind of off-rolling from happening and supporting the well-being of both staff and students. Um, and we found that in the feedback forms and the censuses that we as a foundation have um, have run over the last two or three years, we found that the three main reasons or uh, that people take yoga in schools or people um, employ yoga teachers in schools is because they find that we have a raised social cohesion among young people. Young people are more likely to be nice to each other, to be kind to each other, to be kind to themselves. And also we have actually raised academic performance, raised emotional intelligence because we're inquiring into how we're feeling. Um, we have a kind and non-judgmental atmosphere which allows for people to grow emotionally and also spiritually, which actually is one of the Ofsted uh, guidelines, you know, important guidelines that we need to be f informing our, our kids on a spiritual level as well as emotional. And not only that, but finally, what makes government really interested in this intervention is that it costs, on average, £150 per student per year. As an intervention, it is such a worthwhile and cost-effective preventative healthcare measure that it is in such interest for government to look into this. Last week we had three meetings at uh, Portcullis House, which is a part of the House of Commons, and several meetings with the media exactly about this. So this is something that's starting to surface and we're starting to really have a conversation with people that matter, the people that can really make decisions. But at the end of the day, I think what's most encouraging of all is the organic reach. Schools themselves are making the decision to employ yoga teachers despite up to 30% cut in funding in secondary schools in the last two years. And we intend to carry on as much as we possibly can to support the yoga teachers in schools and the schools themselves in their delivery of yoga with our annual conference, with our census, with our surveys, with our feedback service. So yeah, very excited for the time ahead that, um, and I believe there's gonna be a real burgeoning of yoga in schools in the next few years. So thank you very much for listening. Take care, bye.